Welcome back to the land of unpopular opinions and today we are doing a better video than the last one according to booktube because we are talking about the best books that I read in 2020. I already posted a sneak peek on Instagram so if you don't follow me there you can. I don't post that often so I understand if you don't. But we're going to be talking about all the books that I read this year that I found incredible. All of these were five stars and some of them are now my favorite books of all time. So this was a good reading year, favorites wise. I have 10 books that I'm gonna talk about. One of them is sort of a cheat, but I am still counting it because I didn't want top nine. I hope you enjoy, and this is definitely gonna be less salty than the last one. Let's just get into it. The first book that we're gonna be talking about, I am not going in order, these are all favorites. So the first book is Dune by Frank Herbert. I picked up this one because the other one is very hard to hold up, but this year I read Dune and Dune Messiah. I am currently reading Children of Dune and hope to actually finish this by the end of 2020. But Dune was something I didn't expect to like, like at all, because everyone says it's unreadable and boring and hard to get into, which admittedly it was. He has a very specific writing style. But once you get into it, you're into it, and I loved it so much. I devoured this entire book, and then I read Dune Messiah, which was admittedly better than this one, in my opinion. I loved Dune Messiah. That was by far the superior version of the story, and the ending made me cry, and Dune was something I truly didn't expect I would love. I loved it a lot. The world building was so cool. It's closer to fantasy than to sci-fi. So if you're a fan of fantasy like me, you're gonna probably like this if you get past the very scientific writing style, which is probably my biggest problem with this book. But I love the characters, I love the magic, how he developed Paul and Jessica, and their relationships, and how at the center of everything it's not a romance or even friendship, it's family. And <laughs> Alia as a character, I also adored just the entire Atreides family Yes, I love them so much, so I would recommend this to anyone who's interested in giving it a try, but you do need to get past the first hundred pages. When you get used to the writing style and you move past it, you will definitely adore the story and the characters, if you're anything like me, of course. If not, <laughs> it's probably going to be a chore for you. As long as we're talking about books with difficult writing styles to get into, Books of Earth Sea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Uh, now while I'm recommending this and praising it, I am praising the first trilogy. <laughs> Let's not talk about anything past that, but Ursula Le Guin has also an interesting writing style, whereas she describes a lot, like a lot. So if you're not into that, I think you're going to find it very difficult to get into her, but she has such a beautiful way of making you care about the magic of her world and the characters and what they're going to go through because essentially she is one of the only people who has a positive world like there's no war there's no technically throughout the series there's no one evil bad guy that they need to defeat in the third book there is one but it's a bit different than that she's very unique in creating her world and magic and system and I do understand that she wrote this first as a children's book but I think it moves beyond that and turns into something beautiful that everyone can enjoy. The Farthest Shore, which was the third book, was beautiful. I read it so quickly because I couldn't put it down. And I grew to love Jed so much. And his journey as a character was beautiful, not thinking about what she did to him later. And the magic system is so specifically cool in a way that sort of feels like old witches or like Celtic culture or druids. To me at least it has to do with words and I love her. I love her a lot and I think she was beautiful in writing that first trilogy. The problem later was that she used it as <laughs> as a tool to write a feminist manifesto as I said in my last video but now we're talking about the first trilogy which was beautiful. And along with Jed, you get to meet another girl and a little boy, and I would absolutely recommend it to everyone who loves fantasy and can get past the very, very flowery writing style. 
because you need a little time to get used to it. But once you do, I promise you, you will not regret it. It is gorgeous. I'm not going in detail that much because I did read this a while ago. I definitely do recommend it and <laughs> just don't move past the farthest shore. Besides that, it's gorgeous. And it has dragons. And this edition has illustrations in it, which are gorgeous, so I absolutely love it. But I'm just sad that I read to Hanu because she was incredible so far. Why did she have to go and ruin it? Next book is an odd one because it's a classic and I never thought I would <laughs> be putting a classic on the list of my favorite books of this year. But that would be The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I <laughs> listened to it. This is just a collection of his stories, but I listened to the book. The narrator is Richard Armitage, which is <laughs> why I even got the audiobook. But I loved the story so much that I actually want to read it again and listen to it again. I mean, get the audiobook because it's Richard Armitage. I don't think you can get a better narrator, but I loved the story so much. It was short, but it has such a nice message that's so clear. And the story is so wonderfully written that it's a joy to listen to. And he's simple. He really doesn't waste his time. So he will get the point across in however many pages. If you think it's short, it is. But he did exactly what he wanted to do and his characters are very fleshed out because he doesn't really bother with <laughs> anyone aside from the main characters the narrator and the two alter egos so you already know probably the story of Jekyll and Hyde but I would recommend reading it and if you're not into classics then listening to it because the experience is lovely it's by far in my opinion Richard's best work because at some point he does a different voice that I was so he has a very deep voice and I was so confused when he did a very high voice for like a little boy or something. I was literally, and I couldn't stop listening to it. It's three hours long and <laughs> I literally just lay down on the couch and listened to it because I couldn't stop. So Jekyll and Hyde, by far, awesome classic. I'm so happy that I read it this year. The next book that I'm going to talk to, or the next two, because I'm going to try and shove them both in the same clip, is Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. <laughs> this year I got into Alan Moore, clearly, and I knew about this for a while, but I wasn't really interested. I have no idea why, because I should have just read it from the beginning. This is basically a parody of your classic comic book story of DC characters and Marvel characters. Basically, he's making a parody of it, but it's so, so good and nuanced that I was amazed. This is pretty much a book. He has so much text at the beginning of every chapter. There's like literally a part where he just writes. This was pretty much a book more than a graphic novel. And the art style is very, very specific. It has very strong colors so that it seems ridiculous. This really, really is a parody. But he makes a beautiful story out of it with great characters. As you can see, I have them. There's Rorschach and there's... Ozymandias. I I love this. <laughs> I thought the writing style was ugly at first, but it's actually very on point for what he was trying to do with the story. And he writes his ass off on this. There's a little part that's unnecessary in my opinion. The like side plot, the story within the story about the pirates or something. I think that was so unnecessary and I'm so happy they cut it out of the movie. But this was just really good. Everything was really good. Every single character is perfect for what they are. And this is probably the only story where the villain who is right actually wins. I would recommend this to absolutely everyone. It's really good. If you're into superheroes, this could quench your thirst, but also not really be what you expect. So that's it for this Alan Moore. And <laughs> as long as we're talking about Alan Moore, we have... We have to talk about V for Vendetta also here. This is now one of my favorites of all time. I had watched the movie many times, loved it. <laughs> then I read the graphic novel, translated it. I couldn't even read it because the translations are awful. You can't translate this. <laughs> but then I bought this because I was interested and now I can never watch the movie again. This 
is a work of art. <laughs> this has a very specific, this is illustrated by David Lloyd. It sort of has a newspapery feel. The pages look like old newspaper pages. And his writing is gorgeous in this. It's very British. It has a 1984 feeling and it's kind of depressing but also very hopeful. David Moore like plays with it so there's a thin line between there's no hope and there's absolutely hope and it's beautiful. The character of B is wonderfully illustrated and one a wonderful character. There's a speech that he does that literally is everything. It's so good. It should be everywhere in my opinion. This is this is a book. This is just one of the best books I've ever read and I think everyone everyone should read this no matter what because it's a beautiful art style and a beautiful text. The character of Evie, I mean the whole movie is basically an insult <laughs> to what David Moore did this did here. This is the best work by far and I'm gonna try and find an illustration. See, I mean, David Lloyd is also a master. There's, of course, this is the only thing that he did. This was literally everything. I'm going to reread it again. And I'm so happy that I actually bought it because now I can never, ever watch the movie again. And as long as I'm in the same clip, yeah, Watchmen. Also, Watchmen is probably the best adaptation ever, ever of any story because the guy that did the movie actually loves Watchmen so much he copied it f copied it frame for frame and put in the same lines and even cut out the unnecessary story within the story so yeah if you're looking for a good adaptation of a comic book just watch Watchmen it's incredible. Next book is also unexpected if you've watched anything it did this year. Lord of the Rings I'm trying to this is a gorgeous copy by J.R.R. Tolkien. I can't believe it took me 20 years for me to read this because I grew up on Tolkien and the movies and the Hobbit book and this but I don't need to talk about this too much. <laughs> Tolkien is just the father of fantasy and you can't love fantasy without loving this because he has everything that you love about the genre. He has the magic, the journey, the adventure, the friendship and just the world. <laughs> When you read Tolkien like I did and you binge it, you're gonna have a hangover of like a couple weeks because you're not in Middle Earth and you're never going to be in Middle Earth. And there's not a more depressing thought than that. So yes, I need to recover after reading this. <laughs> but the world is beautiful. The magic is incredible. You love every single character, every single character because Tolkien's not a person that bothers with bad guys, no. You only follow the good guys and every new good guy that shows up you can't help but love them. He is just an artist, he is insane, he made up a language and do yourself a favor and if you haven't just read Tolkien. I can't believe it took me this long and frankly it's an embarrassment. It has to be here and it's definitely one of the best books I've ever read. What I'm going to talk about is going to be a wrap up of Robert Jordan because I've been reading, reading Robert Jordan for the last two years. And this year I finished it, <laughs> but I can't in good conscience put Memory of Light on here because it's the worst book in the series. Make close with Gathering Storm, but New Spring I did read this year. I think it was one of the first vlogs that I actually recorded. New Spring was just the best. It was a great addition to the series because he wasn't the guy that would write a prequel about some random character that you don't give a damn about. He did a prequel about Moraine and Suwon and I mean why am I blanking? Lan. <laughs> Lan. And this was everything to me because mm, this could have been a thousand pages and I would have read it because he was dealing with the characters that I actually cared about and at that point in the story I've been missing Moraine for so long so I was very excited that I had over 300 pages to read about her. This was great and as you can see I tapped it. <laughs> New Spring was just great, a lovely addition to the series and I'm so happy that he actually did it because these characters deserved a lot more page time than they got and yeah if someone's wondering if it's worth it yes absolutely read it if you're gonna read Wheel of Time. My recommendation would be to read it 
before book 13, that's how I read it, for a very specific reason. But you could read it before everything else. I mean, technically it's a prequel, so do it whenever you want. But I read it before book 13. If you've read the series, you know why before book 13. <laughs> and on the same vein, we have book 13, Towers of Midnight. Now, I'm not putting this book by itself on the list because I hated most of it. But I read this series by character threads. So I read Rand, Perrin, and Matt separately. And I love them. This has some of the best scenes for the three of them in the series. Some of the best scenes. I think most of the ones that I loved were written by Jordan because I can't really see Sanderson writing something that good. At least in this world. I don't know how he writes in his world. But the ending for Matt, the entirety of Rand's story, and Perrin. Just thinking about Perrin's ending in this book made, makes me want to cry. It's so beautifully written that I want to cry just thinking about it. <laughs> Obviously this is book 13 in a very long series. I'm not gonna comment on the specifics, but yeah, absolutely beautiful. These three storylines at least. Everything else is just barely readable because obviously, I mean, he ruined Elaine completely in this character development, was thrown out the window she didn't have any. And Egwene, we already know, I don't like. <laughs> Unless she's on her own and this is where she finally meets up with the other characters, which she is immediately brought down when she meets with others, so. The three guys, though, absolutely, yes, thank you. This had some of the best scenes. Now we are down to our final two, and the first of these is specifically Sword of Destiny. I read pretty much all the books, but last week, wish, I think, this year, Sword of Destiny was just <laughs> top-notch of this series. This is by far the favorite for me. There's two short stories, books, books full of short stories and then he goes into the main series this is the last book of short stories every single story in here was beautiful absolutely beautiful beautifully written you love all the characters he actually goes into deep stuff while also being very fun and this is where Geralt meets Ciri and uh, my heart just flutters every time I remember their meeting this was just absolutely beautiful. If you're gonna read The Witcher, and ironically some of these books, yeah, were also in the biggest disappointments of the year. If you're gonna read The Witcher, I envy you because you should read them chronologically. So this is the second book that you will pick up and honestly the first three are the absolute best just the absolute best. I can't get into details again because this is technically a prequel to the main series, but there's five short stories in this and every single one of them is worth it. Every single page, every single word. This was absolutely beautiful and a perfect book. Pretty much the reason why I still adore the series, even despite that ending. And I'm just gonna talk about the last book in the same clip, which is I had to narrow it down to one because I couldn't talk about series here, but clearly the entire series is perfection. Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. I I love all three of these books equally, but I had to somehow pick a favorite. And I think I think Girl in the Tower is my favorite because Baron the Nightingale has a bit of a slow pace and Winter of the Witch has a scene that I don't particularly like but those are small problems. In that way Girl in the Tower would be my favorite but I love all three equally. <laughs> this is a Russian fairy tale style fantasy that is somehow not for children even though the premise sounds like it's for children but it's literally perfection. You want to read a fantasy trilogy where you like every single character you're supposed to like and there is not a single disappointing thing. A series that wraps up so perfectly, everyone should take pointers. Because things you thought were pushed aside and don't make sense will be wrapped up and made to make sense. And she does nothing for no reason at all. 
and she finishes it in such a perfect way that no one could be left not satisfied. So if you had to ask me what a perfect series was, it would probably be this and I would likely read everything that Catherine Arden will ever do. So yes, recommend this. <laughs> I read it twice this year, actually twice within a month <laughs> because I couldn't believe how much I loved it. So I recommend it to absolutely everyone and I know it's not that popular because people seem to think it has a very flowery writing style which I do see but she has a very simple writing style really you read it quickly you read every one of her books in a day literally in a day I don't think it took me longer for any of the three books either of the times I read it and you're not gonna be able to put it down and you will not in any way be disappointed so Again, do yourself a favor and just read Winter Night. You will have the best time and you can come back to my channel and gush to me about it because I will always be up for talking about the queen, Catherine Arden. That about wraps up this video. I hope it's not too long, but I had a nice variety here. We had some graphic novels, we had some long books, we had a sci-fi, we had a classic. I think this year for reading was excellent and though we had many bad books that we read and duds we also had so many good books that made it to my favorites of all time and I think this was actually a very good reading year I read more in the first half but it was all worth it I had such a good time in 2020 <laughs> reading wise not really life wise so I hope you enjoyed let me know what your favorite books of this year were, were and if you agree with me on any of these other books just comment about them because about my favorites I'm always always up for talking about them so without rambling on this was it and I will see you in my next video